now that you're retiring from Congress, uh, having been elected in 96 and gone to Washington in 97, you're leaving, but you uh, are you optimistic about the future or are you frustrated by the lack of progress that you've seen over the past 18 years? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, you listen, I'm not frustrated. Um, I know human nature more than probably most people. You, you learn that with uh, nursing. Uh, who tolerates pain, who doesn't, who needs to have their hand held a little bit more longer than others. Uh, I'm, I'm optimistic. You have to be. I mean, I don't think I ever realized how much I really love this country. You know, I, I, it's not that I didn't appreciate things. I don't think I was never outside of my area. This is where, you know, I came from Brooklyn, came here, been in this home the majority of my life. And to be able to explore neighborhoods not that far away from me and to see how other people live, hardworking people. You know, my mom and dad uh, were hardworking people. And I have great faith in the American people. And I, I know we're going through a hard time. Uh, I know a lot of Americans don't feel that uh, we're on the right track. Uh, th and there are many things to be concerned about as far as in the world. But I know what is in the American soul. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced it. Uh, and yes, starting with the shooting in uh, the Long Island Railroad and the kindness of people that uh, sh was shown to myself and to my son and to the other victims. And then going to Congress and seeing how people responded after 9-11 which was a horror for, for, for many of us and the amount of people I lost here in this district that lost their, their children or their parents. Um, you know, and, and then going into Katrina and seeing uh, the goodness of people from all over the country being there. Uh, and then all the way up to Sandy that happened here. So I see more goodness than I ever do anything else. You mentioned Newtown. A lot of people took the lack of uh, any sort of legislative action after Newtown as, as a discouragement, people in the, in the gun control movement. Uh, what was your feeling about the impact of Newtown? No, no, I saw something totally different. I, I, yes, I understand that what people would see if they were new to what we've been trying to do for many years, but I saw us going forward. I truly, truly did. Um, and I know that maybe there's not something visible there, but I just saw things going on in the states that were different than they were several years ago, where people were voting uh, on something to try to reduce gun violence. And, you know, people don't pay attention that uh, the NRA was actually losing in court on some of the uh, bills that uh, they were trying to or had passed that were not constitutional. So I saw things differently. And yes, I was just paying attention to it probably a little bit more than a lot of people. But no, I saw a change. Um, I saw a change. Now, one of, the, one of the big moments in your political career was when you gave that speech on the House floor late at night, early in the morning, really, in 1999. And uh, you said, let me go home. Yeah. You know, let me declare mission accomplished. Uh, now you are going home. Um, why now? Well, you know, as with everything, things change. Um, if you had asked me over two years ago, are you going to run again? Of course I'm going to run again. You know, I need to finish and accomplish what I need to do. A lot happened during those two years. Uh, I was diagnosed with lung cancer. Uh, you know, and the diagnosis at that time was not good. But I was determined that that wasn't going to get me down. Newtown happened. Uh, my family said, enough, Ma. Enough. And I just decided that it was time for me to go. And with that being said, uh, I've always felt that everybody's replaceable. But I was comfortable, comfortable that there were other voices now that could carry on what I've been trying to do. And I think it's time for other voices to get involved. Um, 
So I don't have any regrets. I mean, am I going to miss my friends? Absolutely. Uh, am I going to miss the challenges that face you? Because I happen to think challenges are always good for people. Uh, keeps you sharp, keeps you going. Uh, but with that being said, I can get on a train and go visit my friends, uh, but I don't have to be there physically. Mm -hmm. you, you won this uh, nickname of the gun lady. Uh, as you retire, do you think you're retiring as the gun lady? And if so, how do you feel about that? I don't think I'm going to be retiring as the gun lady. I think that I will still be involved in doing whatever I can to reduce gun violence. It's just that I will probably be um, speaking at colleges and universities and trying to educate people uh, on the issue and have that debate, that honest debate, not somebody that possibly could have been brainwashed. Um, I think my mannerisms are, you know, I think most people pick me up as not being your typical politician. Um, so I'm not walking away from it. It's just that I'm, I know that to do the job as a member of Congress, you have to put those hours in. And I know I can't put 70 hours in a week anymore. And I don't want to put in 70 hours a week anymore. And I can look back at my career, and I personally think, besides the great honor of being in Congress, I actually accomplished a lot. It might not be the number one thing that I went to Congress for, but I never gave up on that, and everybody knows me for that, and I've educated an awful lot of people. I think that's pretty good for Carolyn McCarthy of Mineola. <laughs>